So, John, what's the significance of today here at Puget Systems? Yeah, well, <laughs> today is launch, uh, launch day for us uh, for Windows 7. Uh, the official launch date is October 22nd, but Microsoft uh, put out the OEM copies to system builders on October 12th. So here it is the morning of the 13th, and we're getting them all, all in and installed on the computers, and we're hoping to ship out a significant portion of our back orders today. Nice. Okay. So do you have a sense for what number that might be in terms of the volume of shipments you'll make today? Yeah. We're, we're aiming for or around 37 computers going out today. Okay. What makes you different that you can ship today as opposed to October 22nd when most of the other folks are going to be releasing? Sure. Well, there, there's nothing inherent, there's nothing specific to us that yeah. allows us to go out early. It, it's available to all smaller system builders that use the OEM uh, copies. Uh, if we were to have a direct uh, purchasing relationship with Microsoft, that's when we would have to stick to the October 22nd date. Uh, what Microsoft has done is uh, tried to build in a 10-day uh, typical time to market um, in their in their supply chain, and so they're assuming that well, if it takes smaller system builders 10 days to get to market, then okay, that's October 22nd. But we can just we can do it in one day. You guys happen to be <laughs> fast. Sure. Well, I mean that's the benefit of, of the smaller personal builders is that um, yeah, we are lower volume, and that means we can scale up to meet demands on a short-term basis like this. So you, this morning, about I guess nine o'clock, you guys got the certificates of authenticity mm -hmm. delivered to you. Was it FedEx or UPS? I, FedEx and UPS. <laughs> so you <laughs> sort of one of each. We didn't want to leave it to chance. Yeah. <laughs> so then, what do you do once you get those? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, the systems that we've been receiving orders for over the last month. We have them all built up. We had a um, an unregistered, unactivated. Um, Windows 7 all installed, ready to go, and we just needed those COA keys so we could, you know, get it all get it all activated and, and ready to deliver to customers. Okay, so this is a, an atypical machine for us. This is an, an AMD, uh, more of a high-end AMD system. Uh, we typically see AMD for the low end, but they've mm. been making some pretty good product releases recently. Mm. So this has, you know, an Intel solid-state hard drive. We have a closed-loop liquid cooling system for the CPU has uh, 16 gigs of memory. Mm. Oh my goodness. Wow. And a low-end video card. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whoa. So Obviously, they're not doing graphic design sure. or gaming. <laughs> and there's no, there's no real notes on what they're using it for. So uh, I would guess uh, it's a high-end workstation. Maybe virtual machines will be running inside. Yeah. So you've been using Windows 7 in various forms for six months, maybe? Yeah, back before even the RC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice to somebody who's either using Vista or XP and actually planning to buy a Windows 7 machine, mm -hmm. um, what kind of configuration should they look for, and then what should they expect once they get the operating system on a computer? Yeah, well, I guess I should start by saying that, you know, if you have an existing machine and you have Windows XP or Vista on it, don't feel, you know, overly pressured to go get Windows 7. It, it's reliant on your own your own desires and what you want. But if you're getting a new machine, yeah, I don't see any reason not to. Um, you know, go with the latest and greatest. I would make sure you get adequate memory. Um, is Windows that 7 is one gig or oh yeah well Windows 7 is more lightweight than yep. than Vista but I would still get four gigs of memory really okay uh, when when a two gig stick costs twenty eight dollars yeah you just you should just go for it and, and give yourself that best experience possible um, what we expect I guess it depends on where you're coming from if you're coming from XP um, it'll be a significant facelift um, I think it'll be a little bit better at handling things in parallel. They've, they've built a lot more into the user interface where they recognize that, yeah, over the course of a day, people open up 50 different windows, and Windows 7 does a better job of keeping them all, keeping them all straight and uh, not, not uh, allowing you to get too lost in the, in the busyness. Uh, if you're coming from Vista, uh, it's going to be more similar in the user interface. It's still going to have those improvements to multitasking, but I think more than anything, it's just going to feel lighter. You're not going to... Um, you're not going to feel bogged down. And is that just about the underlying system performance? And yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think that they've made any, um, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not qualified to say this, but I, I don't think that they've made any like huge underlying changes. But they've made a lot of tweaks and they've made a lot of improvements. And and the way I view it is, you know, they had Windows XP and then they have Vista and they added on all these different features and it just branched out too far. And Windows 7, they did some pruning and they they uh, got back to the basics of what does it mean to build a um, user-friendly operating system.